Hey YouTube, it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have the review of the Surface Pro 4 Core M Edition. It has no fan, it has the kickstand and it has the pen. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. So as you know, I've been testing a numerous two-in-one devices and always comparing them in either passing reference or in direct reference to the Surface Pro line, and specifically the Surface Pro 4. Now, I've used the Surface Pro 4 Core i5 and Core i7 in the past. I owned the Core i5, and it had 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. One of the things I didn't like about the Surface Pro 4 Core i5 or the Core i7 or the Surface Pro 3 for that matter is its noisy fan that it has to cool it down. Now, I've always been a big fan of the Core M uh, because of its fanless design, as well as the step down version, obviously, of the Atom X5 or Cherry Trail processors. So here we have the Surface Pro 4 Core M, and I've been trying to compare this to different devices, but I thought now that I have it in, in the studio, let's give it a whirl, let's see what's going on, rather than doing a traditional unboxing where we go to see what you get in the box. Basically what you get in the box on the Surface Pro 4 Core M is the tablet itself, the Surface Pen, we'll get to that in a moment. Here is the charger, and it has the flip out prongs, just like that. The output is 15 volts, 1.6 amps. So I don't think it needs as powerful a charger as the Core i5 or the Core i7 or even the Surface Book. So that's one thing that is a little bit different. This also doesn't have a USB port that the other chargers have. I believe the Surface Book has that. And I believe the Surface Pro 3 has that as well. Having said that, the Surface Pro 4 Core M is pretty much exactly the same as the other devices. Fully laminated display, beautiful display, and you also get the Surface Pen, just like you do on the Core i5 and Core i7 version, and the Surface Book. It's the same body, it's that beautiful magnesium alloy that Surface Line uses, including the Surface 3, and you get, of course, the kickstand, that iconic kickstand that goes down as far as that. So you get multiple viewing angles with it. You really are able to do a lot with this device. Now, one thing it doesn't come with in the box is this, the Surface Pro 4 type cover. And this is an improvement over the Surface Pro 3 type cover in a numerous ways. It has a all glass trackpad. It has better spaced out keys, uh, just better overall, more sturdiness. And when you're viewing it on the typing angle, which I'll show you in a little bit, you get much better, less flex, as you say, than you do on the Surface Pro 3 keyboard. Now this keyboard is not included in the package. It's a $129 accessory. The Surface Pro 4 is starts at $899 for this Core M version. You get the M3 Skylake processor, you get 128 gigabytes SSD, four gigabytes of RAM. This is the entry level Surface Pro 4. Let's take a look at some of the ports before we get to the keyboard. What you get in this is you have your charging port right over here. You have your USB 3.0, and we'll get into that in a little bit, why they decided to forego a USB type C to future proof it and rather went with the USB 3.0. We'll, we'll take a look at that. You've got your Thunderbolt port out. You have your, on the top of the device, your power button, your volume rocker up and down. You have a vent all along the top here. Let me put the pen to the side. On the other side, you get nothing except your microphone, headphone jack, and another vent. If you lift up the kickstand, which we'll talk about in a minute, you also have a micro SD card slot. I have a 128 gigabyte SD card slot. It works very well. It's got a camera here, Windows Hello camera, and it has a rear facing camera as well. This has 128 gigabyte SSD, four gigabytes of RAM as we discussed. Let's see how it looks with the keyboard attached. It connects with the magnets. It's a very strong magnet. 
The keyboard, as we discussed earlier, is backlit. It's much improved over the Surface Pro 3 type cover. It has excellent spaced out keys, has good decent key travel. It's a quieter keyboard. They've done some technology where the keyboard is not as loud as a Surface Pro 3 keyboard. So if you're in a meeting, that is something you might want to keep in mind. As far as the trackpad is concerned, it's actually larger than the Surface Pro 3 trackpad. It's an all glass trackpad and it feels great. We're looking at the keyboard here. It has this magnetic bar right over here, which allows for a elevated typing angle. You can see it from the side here. And it really does feel more sturdy when you're typing over the Surface Pro 3 keyboard. So that's a big improvement, I think, from the generation to generation in terms of the type keyboard. Now, recently, Microsoft just announced a special edition Alcantara keyboard where it has a matching gray Alcantara fabric that they're using for more high-end, more premium keyboard feel and look. And I did not pick one up. It's $159, so it's a $30 premium over, say, the black or any of the other colors. I didn't think it was worth it, but just something I wanted to point out. For aesthetic reasons, people might want it, so it might be something to consider. Another thing I wanted to point out regarding the keyboard is the inclusion of the volume up, down, and mute buttons. They just had the mute button, I believe, on the Surface Pro 3 keyboard. They brought it back on the Surface Pro 4 keyboard, which is a good touch. And if you want to do volume brightness up and down, you can while hitting the function button, you hit the backspace or the delete button. Now, as far as the display is concerned, it went from a 12 inch display to a 12.3 inch display. Although they're using the same chassis as the Surface Pro 3, it does have more screen real estate. It's still the same three by two aspect ratio. So it's like a piece of paper in terms of dimensions. And the Surface Pro 3 had a 2160 by 1440 resolution. They've bumped that up to 2736 by 1824. It went from 216 pixels per inch to 267 pixels per inch. So there's an improvement right there. They've reduced the bezels around the screen to accommodate the larger panel. It gets very bright. It's very responsive in terms of touch screen. Now, as far as this pen is concerned, the improved pen also has some additional functionality. Pressing once activates OneNote. Holding it down activates Cortana. What's the weather like in New York? Right now, it's 48 and lightly raining in New York. So as you can see, Cortana is working well with the pen and OneNote activation works flawlessly. Good job, Microsoft, on the Surface Pro 4 pen. Now, another thing they did with the pen is they flattened it on this side. Again, making it easy to put as a magnet, stick it to the side of the unit. They made it feel more like a number two pencil and it does have more of a pen to paper feel than its predecessor. So again, good job Microsoft on this pen. Now the pen it uses is the updated version of the Surface Pro 3 pen. It uses this, obviously this is Surface Pro 4 pen. It has a lot of good, very good pressure sensitivity, very improved feel as terms of pen to paper feel, which is what the pen is really striving for. Let's take a look with OneNote and see how it performs as far as drawing a diagonal line across the screen. That's usually a good telltale sign of the responsiveness of the pen. So here we go. I'm going to try to do this my left hand here. And there you go. Pretty smooth. I can tell you the pen feels very, very responsive. It almost has that pen to paper feel. This is not quite as good, but this is about as good as you're gonna get other than the Apple Pencil, in my opinion. One interesting feature that the Surface team put into this device is they put a very strong magnet on the side. Instead of giving us a loophole that we would stick on and lose and so forth like they did in the Surface Pro 3, and you would stick it onto the Surface Pro 3 type cover. This has a very strong magnet. And when I tell you it's strong, it's strong. Now, would I keep it on there all the time? No, I would actually take it off in my bag and put it in some other compartment, other pocket, because I think you're probably going to knock it off when you put it into your bag. So I would put this separately. But when it's on its desk, when you're carrying it around within the office or within your house, this is really a very handy magnet to stick it to. And I tell you, it's very sturdy. I think that's a good job, Microsoft, on the inclusion of a very strong magnet on the side there. As you can see from the Crystal Disk Mark test, it did a 769.3 on the read, 157.6 on the right.
On the Geekbench test, it did a 2187 on the single core score and a 4577 on the multi core score. As far as sound is concerned, take a look and a listen at our latest video the Chewy HI12 Stylus dual boot version and keyboard dock unboxing. Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And as you know, I unboxed and reviewed the Chewy HI12, a 12 inch tablet with a retina screen. Tonight we have its dual boot version. It's the Chewy HI12 stylus. It has both Windows 10 and Android 5.1. In addition, it also has stylus support. Let's find out what's inside this box. <laughs> As you can hear, the sound on the Surface Pro 4 Core M is excellent. One thing that Microsoft did was improve the Windows Hello from its initial release, and they did some firmware software updates and since then, and it's worked much better. I used to have a lot of problems when I had my Surface Book, and Windows Hello was a real problematic. I think it had a lot to do with the software, with Skylake, with the fact that it's Windows 10, and the new technology and the camera and so forth. So they've ironed out a lot of the bugs, especially with Windows Hello. Let me demonstrate Windows Hello. It uses face recognition to log you in rather than using a password or a pin. So let's take a look at Windows Hello in action. So as you can see here, it's turning on the camera, and just like that, I'm logged in. Matter of seconds. So much improved Windows Hello, wanted to point that out. Good job, Microsoft. So overall, is a Surface Pro 4 with the Core M a buy or a don't buy? I'm going to have to say it's a buy. However, there are some caveats. First, let's talk about what I don't like about the device. Battery life. I don't like the fact that it only gets five to six hours at most. This thing should get eight to ten hours. We're in 2016 and any device that Microsoft releases with a Core M processor should get 8 to 10 hours. I don't care what anybody says. I understand it has a high resolution display. I understand size is going to be a limit in terms of how much battery you can put in. But 2016, you have to have 8 to 10 hours all day battery life, especially with a mobile device like this. So Microsoft, try to improve the battery life on the next iteration. Price. This thing costs $899. This is the entry-level device. It has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. Now, that doesn't include the $129 type cover that you have to buy separately, pushing the price to over $1,000. Now, when you compare it to something like the Chewy HI12, which I recently unboxed and reviewed, that thing comes in under $300 with the keyboard dock and the dual boot version as well. So if you're looking to price to value ratio, the Surface Pro 4 has room to improve. But putting those negatives aside, here's what I do like about this device. I love its gorgeous 12.3 inch display. It has a higher resolution display, slightly higher resolution display than the Surface Pro 3, its predecessor. I also like the fact that the Core M3 did pretty well on the Geekbench test and the SSD did pretty well on the Crystal Diskmark test. I like the fact that this is very portable, very light, and excellent premium build quality. I love the magnesium alloy that they use in terms of construction. It's really solid and very premium feeling. The good news is the pen is included, and the pen works very well. As far as improved technology, pen to paper like feel, it did its job. It's more like a number two pencil with a squared off edge. And I love the fact that you can stick it on the side of the device and store it there when you're not using it. Although I would take it off and put it in a separate pocket in your bag so it doesn't get knocked off during travel. What do I think of this device? I'm gonna have to say a definite buy, ladies and gentlemen, with the caveat that it is about $200 overpriced in my opinion. This should have come in at $699 and should have included the keyboard. There's a lot of competition out there nowadays between the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S, the Lenovo Mix 700, the HP Spectre X2, the list goes on and on. But I do love the screen and I do like the performance and I love the fact that it doesn't have a fan with its Core M design. So there are a lot of positives that certainly outweigh the negatives. So take that for what you will. Please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video, and please let me know of any other device you would like me to compare this to while I still have it. But until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.